Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create your first Jekyll website. So we're going to create our Jekyll website, and then I'm going to show you how you can serve that website up on your local web server. And finally, I'm going to talk you through some of the default files and folders that Jekyll creates for us in our new site. The first order of business is to actually create our site. So I'm going to open up my command prompt or my terminal. In my case, I have a terminal window here in my text editor. And I want to type out the following command. I'm just going to type Jekyll new, and then I want to type the name of the blog or website that I want to create. In my case, I'll just create a blog called GA underscore blog for Draft Academy blog. I'll hit enter, and this is going to go off and create our GA blog for us. And up here in the documents folder, you'll notice that this GA blog got created. So in here, we just have a bunch of default files and folders. And when you create a new Jekyll site, Jekyll will actually create some default content in there. So you can see here, we have this about markdown page and here's like the home page of our website. And so without having to do anything, Jekyll has already like scaffolded a basic website for us. And before I talk you through what all of these things do, I just wanna show you how you can view your website. So the first thing you wanna do after you create your new site is make sure that you move into that new directory. So I'm just gonna type CD and then I wanna type the name of the website that I just created. So it's just GA blog. And so now that I'm in this GA blog directory, I can serve up my website. Basically what that means is Jekyll is gonna go out and take all of our, the pieces of our website compile them together and then serve it up on our website. That way we can view it in our web browser. So I just want to type out bundle exec Jekyll serve. And the first time that you run this, you want to make sure that you include bundle exec. But after you've run this the first time, then you can just type out Jekyll serve and it'll serve up your web pages. So I'll hit enter. And what this is going to do is it's going to start a website on our local host. So it's 127.0.0.1 and it's on port 4000. So let's go over to our web browser and we'll take a look at the site that just got created. I'm over here at localhost colon 4000 and you can just refresh the page and you can see this is the basic website that Jekyll has created for us. So just by running that Jekyll new command, we automatically get this website and it actually looks pretty good. You'll see there's some like default content here. There's like an about page up here. So any changes that you make to your website will get reflected on localhost 4000. Back over in the text editor, I just want to walk you through some of these default files and folders that Jekyll created for us. So up here we have obviously like the site, like the GA blog, and this is sort of like the main high level folder. Inside of here, we have this underscore posts folder. And this is probably the folder that you're gonna be using the most in Jekyll. It's basically the folder where you store all of your blog posts. So by default, Jekyll has given us like this example blog post, it's called Welcome to Jekyll. So any of the blog posts that you write or create are gonna go inside of this posts folder. The next folder is this underscore site folder. And this is another really important folder. And this is basically like the final output of your website. So when you're building your site using Jekyll, you store all of your posts in a certain folder and you can store your, like your other pages and other images or resources and all these different folders. But eventually you're gonna get to the point where you want to take your website and you wanna host it on a web server. So you're gonna want all of your static files. In other words, you're gonna want like all the files for your website. and in this underscore site folder, that's where all of these go. So the underscore site folder basically holds like the finished final version of your website. So if I wanted, I could copy all of these files and put them over on a web server and it would run my website. So this underscore site folder will continually get updated as you, you know, build more blog posts or build more pages or, or things like that. And, but you know, just know that this is sort of like the finished product of, of your website. So you're not actually gonna wanna be modifying anything inside this folder. That'll just get updated for you. The next important file to note is this underscore config.yaml file. And this is a, a YAML file. And YAML is basically just a, a language that you can use to store like key value pairs or, or variables. And this config.yaml file is 
essentially just like the settings for your Jekyll website. So you can see here we have different attributes like title, email, description, base URL, Twitter username, GitHub username. These are all just attributes that we can store about our site. And so in here we can configure different settings and configure different variables in order to affect the way that our website's going to run. The next really important file is this gem file down here. And this is basically a file that's used with Ruby and it's used to store all of the dependencies for our website. So you can see here, the first and biggest dependency is Jekyll. But then we also have this other gem dependency, which is Minima. And this is actually the theme that Jekyll is using by default. So if you remember over on our website, it actually looks like pretty good, right? It's using a it's using a like a theme that was created, uh, and it sort of is used to just display our content in a specific way. So this gem file is just used for specifying different uh, Ruby dependencies for our Jekyll site. And so in here, you could specify like plugins if you want to download plugins or uh, other things like that. The rest of these files are actually just part of the default website. So here's this like about file. This is actually a markdown file. And this is like the about page on our website. This index file is like the home page on our website. So you don't, you know, don't worry too much about these files. Jekyll created those by default for us. Um, but you can go ahead and like modify those or, or change them as, as much as you want. So that's a basic overview of the folder structure in Jekyll. And hopefully that gives you a good idea of not only how to create your site, but also like what's contained in the site. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.